This is Matthew Cratter from Trade University, and today I want to talk about defending a fellow Bitcoiner. This is going to be a plea for a donation, but even if you're not interested in donating, I hope you'll still consider watching this entire video because I think it's also going to be very educational. And I'm going to be talking about things in this video that I've been very hesitant to talk about before. So this is a video about Craig Wright. He's an Australian computer scientist and businessman, at least that's what his Wikipedia entry says, and he has been claiming to be the real Satoshi Nakamoto. As part of this, he did a hard fork of Bitcoin, which is called BSV, Bitcoin Satoshi's Vision. It's neither Bitcoin, nor is it actually Satoshi's vision. What this is, in fact, is a failed fork of Bitcoin. This is a chart of BSV versus Bitcoin. It's been a complete failure. It's collapsed relative to Bitcoin. It's collapsed relative to fiat, and it now commands a very tiny percentage of the real Bitcoin, BT market cap. So this is who we're going to be talking about, Craig Wright and his lawsuits. But before that, because we're talking about someone who has sued a lot of people in the past, I want to make this very clear. And also, I want to be very fair. I do not know Craig S. Wright personally. I've never met him. I don't know anything about him except what I've read online on widely available websites, which I'll link to in this video. All of my opinions about him are gleaned from internet research. I may get things wrong in this video, so please do your own research. And I do wish Craig well, and I pray every day for his continued good health, and I especially pray that he doesn't get hit by a falling meteor because karma. So he is currently suing a an anonymous account on Twitter called Hodlnot. I believe Hodlnot was actually doxxed as part of the legal proceedings, which means that his public identity and personal information was made public because he was being sued both in Norway and in the UK, as we're going to talk about. This has been very expensive for Hodlnot. It all started with a few tweets back in uh, March of 2019. I'll link to some articles that go into the chronology a little bigger, a little in a little more depth. But what basically happened here is he received a legal notice, a letter of claim from Craig Wright's lawyer saying, basically remove your tweets, apologize, and confirm in court that you believe that Craig Wright is in fact Satoshi. So Hadlnot is just a regular guy who's being sued, um, as far as I can tell. And it, he's spent, uh, so far he spent $2.4 million defending himself. He's been doxxed and he's had to devote his life to these lawsuits. He's going to be, the first uh, trial takes place in Norway in just uh, a week or a week or two, which we will talk about. So that's the basic thing. This lawsuit, Craig Wright suing Hodlnot. We'll talk a little bit. If you want to dig into the timeline, as I said, I will link to it here. But there's basically, there's a declaratory statement that was filed in Norway. There's going to be a hearing in on September 12th, I believe. And then there's this libel suit in the UK. I don't think these kind of lawsuits can be brought in the US, but I, I have been hesitant to make a video about this for that reason. So I hope you understand the way that I am presenting this because this is exposing me to personal risk. Many people have asked me over the years, do I, whether I believe that Craig Wright is Satoshi. I do not believe he's Satoshi. And again, that's just what I believe. It's a personal belief and I might be wrong. But the argument that I make, or the reason I believe this, is that if Craig Wright were Satoshi, he could either move some of Satoshi's Bitcoin, he could just move a few sats, he wouldn't even have to move very much of it, or he could simply sign a message, which is something you can do on the Bitcoin network if you have the keys to an address. And so if you have the private keys to a Bitcoin address, you can sign a message and thus prove ownership of one of these many addresses that are believed to belong to Satoshi because Satoshi mined, he was the only miner in the early days or one of the only miners. He earned all this Bitcoin in the process. People estimate they don't really know the addresses belong to him, but th these addresses are assumed to belong to him and they contain more than a million Bitcoin when you add them all up. None of them have ever been spent or moved. I think one of them was moved in a trial transaction to Hal Finney back in 2010. Uh, in the very early days. But basically, if Craig Wright were Satoshi, he could, this is the thing about Bitcoin, you don't have to trust anyone, you can verify it, and he could verify it by just signing a message on one of his Bitcoin addresses. And he's either unwilling to do this for obvious reasons, because it might not work, or he's unable to do this because he doesn't actually, he's not actually Satoshi, he doesn't have the private keys to these addresses. This is the strange thing about BSV supporters. They really tie themselves into pretzels, going into all the legal details, explaining why Craig Wright is really Satoshi. But 
he still can't perform this simple action, which makes me skeptical. Again, I could be wrong, and I'm going to let you draw your own conclusions. Also, based on my own reading of Satoshi's, Satoshi's known writings, Satoshi strikes me as, as having been or being a very noble and generous person. He's never spent any of his Bitcoin. He gave this gift to the world. He did not use it to profit from Personally, he was also a cypherpunk. We do know that. We know his sort of libertarian stance on things. And we know that he was not a fan. He was certainly not a fan of the existing financial or legal system. So I don't think the real Satoshi would ever have resulted to lawsuits to accomplish his goals. This was the whole point, using cryptography and advanced math and the internet to accomplish your goals in this very decentralized and underhanded way, not having to do uh, blatant uh, lawsuits. And I especially don't think that Satoshi would have sued a small Twitter account who had just something like 8,000 followers. Again, that's just my personal opinion. I'm glad I'm sitting in the U.S. as I'm recording this and publishing it, and I might be wrong. If you're finding this video helpful so far, please hit that like button, hit the subscribe channel, hit the subscribe button, maybe share this video with a few friends. So I'm going to link to a number of articles about this case Here's an article that states that, and again, I don't know if this is true, but this states that Craig Wright's a con man who can't even program. He muddles even the basics of Bitcoin tech. Uh, he started claiming to, he created Bitcoin to get it after trouble, after running a multi-million dollar ta tax fraud. Again, that's just what this article says. I'm not sure if this is true. I haven't done any more research. He was raided by the police in Australia. He had to leave the country. He has tried to, he's been asked in court to provide proof that he owns the Bitcoin, as we talked about. And at one point, he was actually ordered to provide a list of specific Bitcoin addresses where he owns the Bitcoin. And when he submitted this, these addresses, this list of Bitcoin addresses to the court and this document became public, immediately a number of people who actually control these addresses signed messages on those Bitcoin addresses saying that Craig Wright was a fraud. And this shows that Craig Wright does not even control the addresses that he claims to control, unless he does control them and he's calling himself a fraud, which I suppose is possible. Finally, this article claims, and again, this may or may not be true, but it's certainly a very damning piece of evidence that even his mother called him a pathological liar. So I'll, I'll link to a number of these articles if you want to browse them. Meanwhile, I'll also link to this article about how to sign and verify Bitcoin messages. There are different ways of doing this. Here's how you do it on a Trezor, uh, using a Trezor hardware wallet. And this is a way that you can prove ownership of a specific Bitcoin address if you ever need to do this. And Craig Wright, if you're listening, this is how you could actually show us that you own these Bitcoin addresses. And so I'd encourage you to do that because if you are Satoshi, we would all like to bow down and worship you. So if this is a message to BSV people who may be watching this video, if you own or promote BSV, in my opinion, not only are you a damn fool who doesn't understand anything about Bitcoin or its history of hard forks or all the various contentious things that have happened or even how it works, and you don't understand Bitcoin messaging either, but you are also by supporting BSV, you're actively helping to support a person that I believe might be a litigious asshole. And of course I might be very wrong, so please come to your own conclusions, but this is the problem with meddling with BSV. Not only is it a coin for complete losers who want to, who want to get uh, become increasingly poor, but you're also supporting Craig Wright, who in my opinion is not someone you should be helping out for obvious reasons. So there is this community comp campaign. There's a fundraiser to help support Hodlnot and help to pay some of his legal fees, especially the UK legal fees, as I understand, are going to be enormous. And he's already spent $2.4 million. I think he's risking his family's financial future for this, and he may have to file for bankruptcy based on what I've understood if he loses these cases. So you can make up your mind about Craig Wright. You can make up your mind about Hoddle not. What I'm going to show you in the rest of this video is how to donate to, to this campaign if it's something that you're interested in doing. And it's something I've already donated. I'll be doing a trial donation as well on this video. Before that, though, I need to discuss one small matter. I know that I've often said to never spend your Bitcoin, and I've said this repeatedly on this channel. The reason for this is I try to keep my talking points very simple and easy to pass on, especially for beginners and newbies. But a more subtle version of it is this a more nuanced version keep your long-term savings in bitcoin store your savings in bitcoin make bitcoin your unit of account and your store of value but store it in cold storage don't trust your keys with someone else don't trust celsius with your keys don't trust uh, coinbase with your keys 
stored on a hardware wallet like a cold card or a Trezor, either single sig or multi sig, which I teach people how to set up in my Bitcoin course, and then have a separate wallet. And this can be a hot wallet because it's usually not going to contain that much money. It'd probably be the same amount of money that you would keep in your wallet, in your back pocket, or in your purse, maybe just a couple hundred dollars, depending on how much cash you use. But this would be a separate wallet, probably be a hot wallet because it's easier to use. And if it were to get hacked or stolen, it wouldn't be the end of your financial uh, your financial health. So you have your your savings in, in cold storage, then you have a separate Bitcoin wallet that you use to spend and replace. replace. And so you could use a moon wallet for this. You could use strike as I'm going to use in this, uh, in this video. But spend and replace basically means you spend some of your Bitcoin from this separate wallet, and then you immediately replace it by buying some new Bitcoin. And this way you help Bitcoin to become a medium of exchange and it doesn't just sit in cold storage. So there's nothing wrong with stuff sitting in cold storage. It's, it's serving a purpose there as well. It's protecting you from central bankers. It's protecting you from currency devaluation. It's protecting you from censorship and it's protecting your savings from confiscation. So you have one cold storage solution and then you have a hot wallet. And it's very important never to do a transaction between these two wallets, your cold storage wallet and your spend and replace wallet, unless you understand the intricacies of how to use Bitcoin privately. And this is still a work in prog progress, Bitcoin's privacy angles. A lot of this will be accomplished through the Lightning Network and apps and second layer or third layer solutions. Right now, you can accomplish some of this through CoinJoin, which I also talk about in my course. I can't talk about it here for very obvious reasons. But you don't need to learn that as long as you keep these two wallets separate. You keep your cold storage separate from your hot wallet that you use for spend and replace. If you do, if you spend between these two wallets, you might end up linking them on chain, providing some breadcrumbs, some clues for the chain surveillance companies who could then link those two. Or you may actually even allow people to figure out how much Bitcoin you have in cold storage. If you move it from cold storage, to your hot wallet and then you pay someone with it and they follow this transaction back on chain, they may be able to see, look up some of your addresses, see where the Bitcoin came from and have an idea of how much Bitcoin you own in cold storage. So privacy is a difficult thing in Bitcoin and it's important to be careful. If you're hodling for the long term, these privacy issues I think matter much less simply because when Bitcoin is widely accepted, it's not really gonna matter uh, quite as much as it might in a, in a regime that's trying to censor Bitcoin and Bitcoin usage, for example. So one way of doing this, one way of having a spend and replace wallet is you can use this, the app Strike either on your, on your phone, on your Android phone, or on your, your iPhone, on iOS. You can also use it as a Chrome browser um, uh, connect, connection, which I'm gonna show you how to do right here. Now the donation page for this is called defendingbtc.com. And as far as I can tell, this is completely legit. It was set up by people like Matt O'Dell and some other good Bitcoiners. So you can go to defendingbtc.com. I'm not involved in this at all. I've just heard about it online. I have donated here. You can read a bunch of links about the case. You can watch the live telethon fundraiser that some people did. You can read various Bitcoin magazine articles. And you can also follow the countdown clock for the Oslo trial, which starts in just nine days on September 12th. You can also use this page to get involved and to donate, which is what I'm gonna show you how to do for the remainder of this video. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna click this donate button. That will take me to this OpenSats page and the OpenSats Legal Defense Fund. As I understand it, this entire balance right now is going towards HODLNOT. If you wanna be sure about that, you can contact the organizers of this. Uh, you could DM Matt O'Dell, for example, or Marty Bent, one of those guys, and do it. I haven't contacted them about this. I'm, I'm happy with the money I donate being used for things in addition to HODLNOT. So the OpenSats Legal Defense Fund aims to defend open source Bitcoin contributors from lawsuits regarding their activities in the Bitcoin and free and open source software ecosystems, FOSIC ecosystems, by directing donations to fund legal fees related to these contributions. Again, I'm not affiliated with this at all. I'm not profiting from it. I'm just publicizing this and I have donated to it. I think it's completely legitimate. And if you want to support HODLNOT against Craig Wright, this is one way that you can consider doing it. So then we'll just click the donate button right here. Now there are two ways to donate. 
Now, if you want to make this a tax deductible donation, at least in the US, you're gonna to have to click this yes button. You'll have to add your name and email address, and then they can email you a tax receipt that you can use with the IRS if you ever get, get audited. What I'm gonna do here, and if you wanna do it anonymously, you do not need to do it in that way. You can just click no, and then you don't have to include your name or email address. You can say how much you'd like to contribute. I'm just gonna click $50, so that's not gonna end up being the amount that I do. So we click there, and then what I'm gonna do, you can use your credit card, you can don donate with Fiat. Um, I'm gonna set up here how to do it. I'm gonna show you how to do it using the Strike uh, Chrome browser extension. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna click Donate with Bitcoin. It's gonna take us to this page, and there's gonna be an address here which I can copy. I can either scan this if I have the hot wallet on my phone, I can scan this QR code, or I can go right here and click copy. I can go down to the Bitcoin address, uh, copy it to my clipboard. And then the next thing I do is I'm just gonna go to my Chrome uh, browser for Strike, uh, the Chrome extension. Some of this I may need to black out because there's some personal information here. I'm gonna go to the Bitcoin tab at the bottom and I have some Bitcoin in here approximately $120.27 worth of Bitcoin. So I've copied, I've already copied that Bitcoin address to my clipboard. So all I need to do is go to this paper airplane here. I can, uh, I can paste it right here and that will paste the address. Now I'm just gonna donate the maximum amount, which is roughly $120. And then all I do is I click uh, confirm. That's the amount of Bitcoin I wanna send. Here's the address. I may have to black this out. And then I click confirm and that sends it uh, using Strike. And so then OpenSats, the OpenSats Legal Fund will receive this and they can send it on to Hodlnot to the extent that he needs it. So I hope you found this video helpful. Please share this if this is a cause that you're interested in supporting. I don't normally put these sort of things on my channel, but I think this is an especially important one and that we Bitcoiners can help to take care of each other. If you have the ability to donate a larger amount, like five, 10, $50,000, $100,000, I'm sure that would be appreciated as well. If you can only donate a couple dollars, that all adds up. If I have approximately $178,000, $179,000 on my channel, uh, on this YouTube channel, if you each donate just $1, that's a significant amount of money. As I understand it, they've raised, um, I think you can see on, on one of these pages how much they've raised, but they've raised roughly uh, 60 Bitcoin. So that would put us at, call it uh, $1.2 million if I'm doing the math correctly. And I think Carl Knott's gonna need millions and millions and millions of dollars to fight this person who is funding himself by dumping BSV, as far as I can tell, on really dumb retail investors. So please stay away from BSV if you believe what I'm saying. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.